Marvin Mediocre Vittori takes on Jared Melatoninier this Saturday. We are two days out, and this is going to go down as a fight that takes place in the UFC. All right? And at least we are going to see one of the most well-rounded fighters in UFC history, and that isn't a joke. I'm talking about Marvin Vittori, who might just be the most complete mixed martial artist in the game right now. He is basically the same in every single one of his skills. His striking, his grappling, his kicks, and his punches, they're all pretty much level with each other. The only issue is, if this were a video game, each one of those skills would be rated 50 out of 100. Straight failures across the board because he absolutely sucks in every single one of them. But he's still a little bit higher than some of these other middleweights in a couple of categories. And those categories take him above the rest. And we're talking about toughness. We're talking about chin. And most importantly, that stubborn, stubborn mentality of Marvin Vittori. Yeah, the same mentality that keeps this guy coming back time and time again after us fans thought he would have learned his lesson against a guy like Adesanya or Robert Whitaker. He just won't quit. You cannot not respect it, basically. I mean, you got to respect Marvin Vittori's grind. You got to respect his hustle. And Jared Cannonier might just be the guy to be able to weather that storm because we're talking about a hungry, hungry man. You know, we talk about dad strength. When fighters have kids, they have dad strength. Jared Cannonier, he's got that single dad strength, all right? We're talking about that grind, that that desire to, to put a bag on the table. He's got that pursuit of happiness. You know what I'm talking about? That's the thing that keeps him pushing, that keeps him chugging along. And you got to give him credit. I mean, to be able to look like you're made out of steel at 39... We're talking about a Yoel Romero half, a, a 0.5, not a Yoel Romero 2.0, just because he's not as good as Yoel, but a Yoel Romero 0.5 in the making is what Jared Cannonier is. He's almost 40 years old. The question is, can the almost 40-year-old Jared Cannonier go out there? He's 39 years old. I'm saying 40, but he's 39. Can he go out there and beat Marvin Vittori, a 29-year-old guy that is slowly improving, that might not even be in his prime yet, that can also mix it up? I think he can. And the reason why I'm going to lean towards Jared Cannonier is because he's able to make adjustments mid-fight. Like, he had a close fight with Sean Strickland. But Sean Strickland is one of the hardest men to hit in the entirety of the middleweight division. And the reason why Jared Cannonier won that fight was because he was able to make adjustments. And I don't ever see Marvin Vittori make adjustments in his fights. Whatever this man is drilling in training camp, if he goes into the fight with a plan to establish a jab and a leg kick, he's going to be throwing jabs and leg kicks, and that's it for 25 minutes. And that's what makes him okay is he's going to be doing it for 25 minutes. But if his opponent slips every single one of his jabs in the first round, he's going to keep doing it. Like, he doesn't have a great fight IQ. And I know he has a boxing base, but it sure as fuck ain't very evident because he looks stiff as ever when he's throwing his punches. He, as I said, a jab and leg kicks. Those are the only two weapons that are decent for him. And the leg kicks are relatively new. But the thing is, though, I think the predictability of Marvin Vittori is going to be an issue because of the adjustments that I mentioned Jared Cannonier making in the Strickland fight. The adjustments that Cannonier made in the Strickland fight was to go to the body so that he could have more success finding the chin. In the early goings of that fight, Jared Cannonier could not, for the life of him, find the chin of Sean Strickland. He was really headhunting. And as I said, Strickland's a hard guy to hit. Not many people have had success on him other than Alex Pereira, at least while Strickland's been in his prime. And Jared Cannonier was frustrated. I mean, if you watch the fight, he was literally like telling Strickland, bro, stop moving around so much. I can't hit you. And he started going to the body, he started to throw a jab to Strickland's body in the third round. And that opened Strickland up to thinking about some other areas in which Jared Cannonier might be trying to attack. And that allowed him to start finding the chin. And that's ultimately what won him the fight. His best round was arguably the fourth and fifth round against Sean Strickland. He had a lot of success. And it's not like some wild adjustment, but nonetheless, he was able to make a change mid-fight and showcase some fight IQ. And I do not see the same ability from Marvin Vittori. For example, uh, the Whitaker fight. Whitaker made a phenomenal adjustment against Marvin Vittori because he was actually struggling early on. Whitaker was bouncing off of the Adesanya fight, and he had a lot of success with his lead right hook, or I think it might be his lead left hook because he's an orthodox guy. But he was hitting Adesanya a lot with that hook, and he went into the Vittori fight 
thinking, okay, if I can hit Adesanya with this hook, I can do the same thing to Marvin Vittori, but he wasn't having a lot of success. So the adjustment that he made was to start going up the middle, front kicks up the middle, starting with the jabs, throwing the two down the pipe, and then coming over the top with the head kick. He was spamming straight shots, and he started to destroy Marvin Vittori. And then in the third round, we saw him have more success with the hook because he was able to set it up behind the straight shots. He was able to get Marvin Vittori to think about what's coming next. I don't really know. Now, Marvin Vittori, having success early on, starts having some issues in the second round, and he just can't for the life of him change anything. He's sitting there doing the exact same thing that he was doing in the first round against Robert Whitaker with no answer whatsoever. You know, and we've seen Jared Kennanier fight Robert Whitaker, and sure, he lost that fight, but he at least was able to, like, keep it somewhat competitive. You know what I mean? And he hurt Whitaker as well. And you look at the guys that Marvin Vittori has beat. We're talking about a guy in Kevin Holland. You know, we're talking about a guy in Jack Hermanson. Jack Hermanson might be the least dangerous man on the feet in the entirety of the middleweight division. He has no finishing power whatsoever. Marvin Vittori, he did drop him in the first round. But other than that, it was a stand-up battle. It was relatively close. And sure, your takedown defense allowed you to keep it on the feet, but it wasn't that impressive of a performance. Whereas a guy like Jared Kennanier, he knocked out Jack Hermanson in the second round. In the second round. You know what I mean? And look at look at Marvin Vittori's uh, opponents that he's outgrappled, like a Carl Roberson. Credit to Marvin Vittori. He completely bullied Carl Roberson on the ground, outgrappled him, and worked towards a submission and choked him out. But like that's the level of opponent that Marvin Vittori is out here finishing. Jared Cannonier is finishing a grappler in Derek Brunson. And I actually think that's an impressive victory because, once again, we're talking about adjustments. He got cracked early on in that fight. He got hurt badly by Derek Brunson, dropped. And Derek Brunson jumped on a submission right away. Now, of course, Kennanier made it to the bell. You know, it was 10 seconds of that submission being latched on. And he came out in the second round and was able to make adjustments to finish Derek Brunson off. And we're talking about cardio. Marvin Vittori has really good pace. He has really good cardio. But so does Jared Kennanier. I've never really seen this guy get all that tired in any of his fights. In fact, the fifth round against Strickland, as I said, the fourth and fifth, were those, those were his best rounds uh, against Adesanya. His fifth round looked just as good as his first against Whitaker. He hurt Whitaker in the third round. He was still doing all right, even after he was hurt against Brunson. Brunson was the guy that was gassing. Surprise, surprise. Brunson always gasses, but nonetheless, Cannonier was picking up steam. He was a man on the mission. He was like walking as fast as he could, marching down Derek Brunson to try to get a finish, taking initiative in the Kelvin Gaslam fight. Kelvin Gaslam, a guy with really good pace, really good cardio. He was the one that was waning towards the end of the fight. And it honestly surprises me a little bit because Jared Cannonier is built like a tank. And usually guys that are that heavily muscled tend to gas out. Marvin Vittori and his pace, it's like, who has he really been able to put that crazy of a pace over? Paulo Costa? And I think that that is one of the reasons why we kind of inflate Marvin Vittori is because he beat Paulo Costa. But Paulo Costa really ain't shit. You know what I mean? Like, Paulo Costa wasn't able to hurt Marvin Vittori but Roman Delidzi and Robert Whitaker were. And Costa's claim to fame is being the big puncher of that division. And Costa also doesn't really have great cardio. I don't really look at that as that great of a win. And that's certainly not a guy that's on the same level of a Jared Cannonier. Like, who the fuck has he really beat? To be honest. Like, he just got completely embarrassed by Whitaker and then turned around and looked terrible against Roman Delidzi. Now, I initially thought that Roman Delidzi did enough to win that fight, but upon rewatching it, it was clear that Marvin Vittori outlanded him. But nonetheless, Roman Delidzi is as one-dimensional on the feet as you could possibly get. He's spamming a right hand, he's spamming hooks, right hooks, and that's it. And he was still tagging Marvin Vittori. And as I mentioned earlier, Vittori went in there trying to leg kick him, trying to land a jab, and that's the only thing he could get going on him for the entire time. And I think his predictability is going to be something that Jared Kennanier can take advantage of. And I think Jared Kennanier is going to go out there and just land the harder shots. And the one issue that concerns me is, can Marvin Vittori mix it up and get Jared Kennanier down? Because I think that's his way to win. The way in which Marvin Vittori can win this fight, again, he has to throw with a lot of volume. He has to chop at the legs of Jared Kennanier to try to slow his movement down. And ultimately, he has to be shooting takedowns. He has to try to put Jared Cannonier into a reaction fight, similar to a Marab de Velashvili. Now, the issue is there's only one Marab de Velashvili. And 
no one can have success on the feet against Marav Devalashvili as it is because they just can't get settled into their own groove. And I've seen people get settled into their groove against Marvin Vittori or at least have success hitting him. Um, but I think that would be a decent game plan. And to be fair, we haven't really seen all that much grappling from Marvin Vittori since his fight with uh, Israel Adesanya, right? Or I guess we saw a little bit of it in the Paulo Costa fight, but it got shut down a little bit because Costa has some really good takedown defense. But he didn't try to wrestle against Whitaker for a good reason. You're just going to gas yourself out and waste your time against Whitaker. And of course, he didn't wrestle against Roman Delidze because Roman Delidze has some solid grappling and he's very dangerous on the ground. You don't really want to test him there. We saw what he was able to do to Jack Hermanson and uh, some other great grapplers. But we could see Marvin Vittori with some improved grappling. And Jared Cannonier. When is the last time his grappling has really been tested? I guess it would have to be a guy in Derek Brunson. Because one thing is for sure, Sean Strickland didn't test that out. Israel Adesanya didn't test that out. And Derek Brunson was able to take him down, I'm pretty sure, in the second round. Not even in the first round where he dropped him and then jumped on him. He was able to take him down. So we might see Marvin Vittori come in there uh, with improved grappling. And he could mix it up, as I said, and land the leg kicks and land the jab and just really try to set up those takedowns. But I still think that Jared Cannonier is very dangerous throughout the entirety of the five rounds because, as I said, that cardio is pretty trustworthy. You know, I mean, he was put into a very physical fight against Derek Bronson. Like, they were wrestling with each other. They were scrambling for, for like a minute on end in that fight. Derek Bronson looked completely gassed midway through the second round, whereas Jared Cannonier just started marching him down with crazy initiative to try to get him out of there and landed a really good elbow on the inside into a back fist and then just rocked him and, and landed elbows on top of him on the ground. So if Marvin Vittori just tries to get in Jared Cannonier's face, I think he's going to pay. I don't really see a lot of guys have success when they try to get in Cannonier's face is what I'm saying. Like Whitaker didn't fight Cannonier by getting in his face. Now Whitaker was throwing a jab in his face, but was still keeping a safe distance. And the same thing could be said about Sean Strickland. Cannonier was the one who was kind of marching Sean Strickland down, even though Strickland was doing well on the back foot, you could tell he was wary of getting hit because Kenanier has so much power. And I don't think that Marvin Vittori has the kind of durability to the point to where he can just march Kenanier down. Like, he was getting clipped by Roman, and he was getting hurt by Roman. Like, he got stunned in that fight. And he got stunned by Robert Whitaker too. I wouldn't be surprised if Jared Kenanier stuns him and gain some respect. Like Marvin Vittori's tough, of course, we all know that. But if you're able to get his respect early on with your power, he plays it a little bit safe. And I think that when Marvin starts to play it safe, if he goes into the cage with the same game plan and he's not able to make adjustments, he's just going to be very easy to predict. And I think Cannonier is just going to out damage him throughout the five rounds. So that's going to be my ultimate pick. I'm going to go with Jared Cannonier by decision. I think he's going to get it done 49 46. I am banking on Marvin Vittori to win the first round. I think he's a fast starter. I think he's going to go in there with a lot of uh, energy, and I think he's going to be throwing a lot of volume. But once Jared Cannonier makes those adjustments, if he needs to, and once he starts tagging Marvin Vittori to get some respect, it's going to be a kickboxing battle. He's going to be able to stuff takedowns because they'll become predictable behind all the predictable strikes that Marvin Vittori throws. He's not really setting any crazy traps up. I think it's just going to be Jared Cannonier cruising to a decision. But I'm excited for this fight, even though I have this like feeling looming over me that we are going to be fighting back the urge to sleep in the third round. Like midway through the third round, we're just going to be half asleep watching a you know pitter-pat contest between Vittori and Cannonier because two of Adesanya's most boring title fights were against both of these guys. Cannonier put me to sleep in his title fight with Adesanya and the same thing with Marvin Vittori in his second title fight with Adesanya. And Jared Kennanier's last fight wasn't all that good. And even though Marvin's last fight was pretty high pace against Roman, it was not that fun to watch. You know what I mean? It, there wasn't a lot of skill on display. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Who are you going to be picking? Let me know in the comments. Until next time.